thank you for being here at the Symposium for Anthropogenic Interference of Seed Dispersal from Cities to Rural Areas. I'm here to talk about seed dispersal in the cities and a general overview of how cities um, interfere with seed dispersal that we found out through, our, through the literature I wrote with Annie Hamelin in last, last year. Um, so let's go and let's talk about the seed dispersers in the city. The seed dispersers in the city are going to be very much concordant with the seed dispersals around the city. Um, here you see all the fauna of Ontario, where I'm located right now. And we'll check out the differences between the, the fauna surrounding the city and the fauna within the city. So the seed dispersals within the city are going to be um, different, have difference in abundance and diversity. This is going to be lower. And some are going to be able to thrive within the city, so their numbers are going to be higher. And um, there are going to be new species introduced by human activities. So this is what we're going to have. Just that's a, those are the differences between seed dispersers within the city and seed dispersers outside of the city. So now to look at how the seed dispersers within the city are affected by the city. So how the city interferes with the seed dispersal. First of all, cities have very strong fragmentation, either by roads or by the built environment. And this is going to interfere and even canalize animal movement. It's going to interrupt or canalize animal movement. And it's also going to create isolated patches. And there's going to be an edge effect within these isolated patches. This edge effect can change directionality, distance, and overall efficiency of seed dispersal through fruit uptake. Um, the introduced species are going to have an interference with the local um, seed dispersers. They will compete for resources. They might even outcompete for resources, outcompete them, or they, even, they might even displace them altogether. Um, and this is going to change the seed dispersal patterns. Some introduced species are also going to be potential predators of the seeds, so they might even disrupt completely the seed dispersal service. This has been seen a lot of ants. Um, introduced ants can affect seed dispersal of local ants, but it hasn't been seen much in frugivores. Unnatural food sources, that means like garbage cans, anything that comes from human activity, is going to compete with the surrounding, um, the surrounding uh, fruiting plants. And so the fruit uptake is going to be lower because of this. And also the seed dispersal distance, the overall seed dispersal distance is going to be shorter because of this. Because most animals move based on resource availability. And for example, foxes move. They are opportunistic fruit feeders. And their movements are going to be based on their resource availability. And if there is more resource, if there is more food, they're going to move less. And it has been seen the foxes within the cities have shorter and, and smaller home ranges, home ranges to foxes outside of the city. And human activity, and that means, by this I mean light noise of the city is going to disrupt animal movement. It can even deter some animals. It has been seen the light within the city can disrupt the movement and the behavior of fruit bats, for example, that are nocturnal feeders. They feed on fruit and they're nocturnal. So they rely a lot of, on, on the low light to see, and this, this has been seen to be an effect for them, for example. Now, at the same time, the seed dispersers are going to determine the landscape. So basically, they through seed dispersal, the, where the seeds land and where they grow, this is going to determine the, the green composition, the species composition of the landscape. And this means that seed, um, seed dispersers might bring um, species from natural forest wood towards into the city, into the parks, into the managed landscape and making it more natural, so to speak. But they can also move uh, seeds from the city, from the managed landscape, and that will include alien species, orchard species, species that are not, do not belong inside the urban forest. They're going to bring them into the urban forest, and that potentially disrupts the system within the forest, so exacerbating the problem of the city. So seed dispersal could be, is a potential tool for management of the problematics within the cities. And here, here we have a little summary of the interdependence between the city and the seed dispersal. 
So the urban habitat, the defaunation, and everything we talked about, the fragmentation, the introduced species, are going to affect animal movement and animal behavior, the diet, what they eat, what they don't eat, where they go. And it's going to affect the seed dispersal patterns. So where the seeds, where the future recruits of the plants are going to grow. So it will determine the vegetation of the different areas. So the urban landscape, which itself determines the animal movement. So it's, it's going to be like a loop and it can exacerbate problems. So it's very important to consider this when we're thinking about the urban habitat. So while we were doing the literature review, we saw that some things were, were missing. There, there's not much. We had like 33, um, 33 papers or so. I don't even remember right now exactly, but it was around 30 papers. And we saw that there was a lot of single species interactions. For example, there was only one paper on seed dispersal networks within the city. It was in an urban park. I don't remember exactly who it was. Maybe I should check. But anyways, it's in the it's in the review, and there's one paper that looked into bird seed dispersal networks, and um, and there was only one, so there was no more, and um, and this is something that we we need to really look into because ultimately it's not the single species interaction because when one species is gone, another one is going to take over, but it's going to take over completely different with a different seed dispersal pattern. So we need to look into the networks. And that's, and that's what ultimately is going to determine the landscape, right? So a second thing we saw that there was that was missing was um, that there were many studies looking into seed dispersal across the city, so from the city into the natural environment around it, around the city, and from the natural environment into the city. So what's the seed exchange? There's not much on that, if any at all. And last, the regeneration patterns. We need to know not only where the seeds are going, but also where the seeds are growing. So because that's what's going to determine the urban landscape, right? So that's part of the loop as well. And there's not, not at all, no, we didn't see any post dispersal processes being studied within the city. So those are three things to keep in mind for the future of this field. Um, so just to let you know, I'm currently studying carnivores in Toronto in Canada. So if you're if you're interested on the subject or even in urban seed dispersal per se, I'm always happy to chat.